Now before we dive into today's video, if you love your quest like I do, then do consider checking out my channel. I have top 5s, top 10s, weekly news, gameplay and product reviews. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff too, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be kept up to date with the latest. Today we are checking out a series of mini games by the developer Curious VR. Now why I'm so excited about this one is that it's different from any other VR game I've ever played. It lets you map your play space and really just lets you play in as big a space as you want it. It uses all of the space that you give it. So here you can see to my left that's my lounge room. You see the couch is that block that I've blocked out there. The table is also blocked out and my kitchen bench there as well. Just walk around the kitchen bench. I'll show you how it does this a bit later. I thought I would jump straight into the action first, show you an already made play space and show you the different mini games and how all of that works. So if I turn around, I'll show you over there is a console. There's the different cartridges floating next to it. You just choose the game that you want, you plug it in and you play. It's as simple as that. So I've tried most of these mini games. Uh, Castle Defender is fairly good, so let me plug that in and I'll show you how it works. Now as the game loads, you'll find that everything, my couch, table, the whole environment gets covered with textures and becomes the play space. It's so awesome. Now there are some bugs, it's still very, very early days with this one, so sometimes textures are missing, buttons are hard to press, or the textures look ugly or stretched, that sort of thing. So this is a simple wave shooter, you've got to defend your castle gate with your bow and arrow. So you can see my couch to the left, that is now a stone block, and the edges of the walls are the edges of my play space. Okay, let's try and find these guys. They should be attacking. Oh, here we go. Here's a couple. Let's see if I can take them out. See if I can hit them at least. I think I hit him. Must take more than one hit. Alright, so I'm going to follow him around. This is just so good. <laughs> I can't describe how awesome this feels to be able to move around your play space like this. Just the sense of freedom and the immersion it gives you. And this is just a basic wave shooter, but being able to move around my whole play space like this just makes it a thousand times better than it otherwise would have been. Now the next mini game we're gonna try, Vortex, has to be my favorite mini game by far. So I'll show you how that works. Ah, oh, that's so cool, the environment changing like that. It just never gets old. Okay, so in this game you have this spaceship on your hand, you move your hand, it moves the spaceship and you shoot with the trigger and that's pretty much it. You have to take down other spacecraft, you've got power-ups, these sorts of things. Really, really cool game. We have to find some enemies, oh, I see some enemy fire, I'm not sure where it's coming from. Let's see if I can use my couch as in-game cover. <laughs> That's so good. There are more mini games, which I'll show you later. For now, I'm gonna show you how to make your own play space. It's dead simple, and you'll see I'm doing it here. The first step is drawing the walls. You have to basically just draw all of the walls in your play area. It takes a few minutes, obviously depends on how big your play space is. And what I'm gonna do now is make my play space as big as I can make it. So I'm gonna go into my hallway, which has a few steps I need to go up. Now steps are not ideal when playing VR for obvious reasons, but I wanted to push this as far as I could push it within my own house by making the play space as big as I can. So you see at the end of the hallway, I have this other room here, which I'm also mapping out, and that's also connecting straight into the lounge. So this is gonna be probably the biggest play space I've ever experienced. 
Next, we need to mark out any objects in the play space. So my table here, I'm drawing a cube where that sits. And of course, I'll go around the entire play space, marking out all those different objects in the way. And finally, we create an anchor point, which does exactly what you think it does. It is a frame of reference, if you like, for the program, so that the play space doesn't drift out of alignment. Which, of course, if it did drift out of alignment, then the objects in the virtual space will not be in the same place as they are in the real world, meaning you'll bump into all sorts of things. And we're done. So the next game I'm going to show you is Lightspeed. You have to defend your ship from other ships. Uh, it gets attacked. There's a turret gun right here. The turret gun works really well. The pistol in my hand doesn't work quite so well. It's a bit of a pea shooter. You have to be fairly close in order to hit anything. And I can't see any targets at the moment, but I've got quite a big play space, so they're probably out there somewhere. I think there's a radar there that shows, uh, the red dots show where the enemies are. And I'll show you something cool as well. If I put my palm on this touchpad, how cool is that? It opens the window, and I think that's the other room. The room just off my hallway. How awesome is that? Uh, so let's go visit that room. I'm going to be careful here walking up the stairs. This is just unbelievable. So I don't recommend using stairs in a VR play space. Um, I am taking a risk by doing that, even with being extra careful. Next up we have Luna Ball. This is like a zero G ball game where you have to throw the ball in the target area. It has to stop dead on. It can't go overshoot or undershoot the target. And looks like the target this time is up the stairs in the hallway, so just being extra careful again. They should make playing VR in dangerous play spaces an extreme sport. Another great feature about this one is it spawns objects in the play area as you get further and further in the game, which makes it harder of course as you've got to get the ball around the objects and that sort of thing. And it actually messes with your head because, of course, some of the objects in your play space are actual physical objects in the real world, and some, like this lattice that's just appeared, aren't. So you have to be just super aware about which is real and which is not. Now, the next game we're going to play is Highly Explosive. I haven't played this one before, but the instructions tell me that I need to move to the target whilst trying my best not to hit the explosives that I'm carrying, otherwise they all go off. So uh, let's check it out. Okay, those are clearly the explosives that I'm holding in my hand. Uh, just where do I take them to? Okay, not sure what's happening. Do I put them down here? Move here, okay, well that's pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna go around, what is my couch? Those warning blocks on my couch. I'm gonna take it slow, just because the environment mapping is fairly accurate, but even if it's just a little bit off and I start running around my play space, then there's a chance I'll bash into something, cause some damage, so I'm still gonna be fairly cautious. Okay, now what's next? Oh, there's another one of me. I think that is me, perhaps. Yeah, it looks like a ghost version of me from my previous attempt. So I'm gonna to move to the next spot. I'm not sure what that ghost version of me does, but I might have to reach this destination before my ghost version reaches theirs. And it looks like I found that. So, okay, well, let's check out the uh, next mini game. So this one is like a snake clone. You've got a snake, you have to collect the balls. If the snake hits itself or anything in the environment, then it's game over. So it's taking a bloody long time to get to those power-up balls. Ah, oh, you're kidding me. Okay, so they've disappeared. Okay, you might leave it there. I think you get the idea of this one. Let's go to the next one. Our final mini game is a home creator. So you can create things like this cube here uh, and other objects. Not sure exactly how to move it just yet, but you can also do other things. So you can change textures, for example, on the wall. That's really cool. So if you ever wondered what your home would look like completely made out of wood, well, you don't need to wonder any longer. 
So let's try creating an object and put it in the environment. I selected this ball, there we go. And let's see if I can move that to the counter, the kitchen countertop. There we go. All right, let's pop that on top. Nice. You can also edit the textures in the sky. So I'm going to try underwater, see what that looks like. There we go. So that's about it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, like I said, hit that subscribe button and notification bell as there'll be more coming in the future. Now, again, full props to the developer Curious VR here. They have done such a fantastic job. I love the concept and it gets me so excited to think about, you know, how this type of technology could be used in future. It's such, such an immersive experience having full natural locomotion within a given play space. I've seen a lot of innovative ideas brought out on the Quest, such as hand tracking or games that use procedurally generated environments like Tea for God or Out or Dead. And I have to say, this game ranks right up there in terms of one of the most innovative. I really, really enjoyed this one. Do check it out. That's it from me today, and I'll catch you next time.